Okay, folks, I wanted to make a sequence of videos that looks at Kramer's rule. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So Kramer's rule, Kramer's rule we should think of as just another method for solving um, a system of uh, linear equations. So just like we had the uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination and Gaussian elimination, and then we had the technique of matrix inversion, we've also now got uh, Kramer's rule. So um, keep in mind that this method does require that we have uh, an n by n coefficient matrix. And so for that case to occur, we need to have n equations within variables. Or one way to think about it is the same number of equations as we have unknowns. The notation is sometimes a little bit confusing with Kramer's rule. So um, if I had some matrix A, and it had uh, maybe these column, these entries here, you know, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then I could think of A as being uh, three different matrices uh, combined together or joined together, where we could call the first one V1, the second one V2, and the second one V3, where each V1 or each VI corresponds to a column vector. So this would be the column vector 1, 4, 7. Notice that 1, 4, 7 is this first vector here. Uh, V2 would be the column vector uh, 2, 5, 8. And V3 would be the column vector 3, 6, 9. And so we see we can think of A then as these three column vectors are joined together. So that's what this notation means. And it can look a little bit intimidating at first. To add to that, we're now going to introduce the notation uh, AI, which is the matrix A with a subscript I. And what this means is that we're going to take some uh, uh, column vector with the same number of rows as our matrix A, and we are going to replace the ith column of matrix A with that vector B. So for example, A1 would be, notice that the columns here are the same, V2, V3, Vn minus 1, Vn, but we've replaced in A1, we've replaced the first column with, make, with uh, the column vector B. Likewise, in A2, we've replaced the second column uh, with the vector B, and all the remaining columns are the same, and AN additionally. So if, with our notation up here, our matrix AI, uh, we could think of that as, let's, let's go ahead and give us ourselves a B vector. Let's say B is the vector. Um, let's use some numbers we haven't used yet. So let's do... Uh, uh, well, in fact, let's just make it easy on ourselves. We'll make it 0, 0, 0. So AI in this case would be, um, uh, sorry, let's make that A1. So A1 in this case would be 0, 0, 0, uh, 2, 5, 8, and 3, 6, 9, where A2 would be uh, 1, 4, 7, 0, 0, 0, 3, 6, 9. And we could, compute, we could compute A3 as well. Let's just do that. So we'd have 1, 4, 7, uh, 2, 5, 8, 0, 0, 0. So notice that in A3, I replaced the third column of my original matrix, A here. I replaced that third column with the vector B. Yeah. Uh, we could also put it in this notation then A3, another way to think of A3 is that it's the same V1, the same V2, the same first two column vectors, but now with the third column vector uh, being, being uh, vector B. Okay, so now that we've got this notation down, uh, stating Kramer's rule is, is actually fairly simple. Okay. It says... Uh, <clears throat> Let's, let, let's consider this matrix equation here, AX equals B. Uh, and usually we think of that being associated with a system of equations. And in this case, we need A to be an n by n matrix. And provided the determinant of A isn't 0, then we can solve for each of the individual values in our variable matrix. So X1 is this matrix A1's determinant divided by the determinant of A. X2 is a2's determinant divided by the determinant of A, and so on. Okay. So notice you can see precisely why we need the determinant of A not to be 0 if we're going to be dividing by 0 in our expression for uh, each of the, or if we're going to be divided by the determinant of A in our expression for each of these uh, xi's. Okay, so here um, I think that sometimes again this notation even though we've gone through it can be a little unwieldy so I went ahead and gave an example of Kramer's rule in three dimensions 
and I'll let you look through that. So here I've got a system of equations. In this case, my unknown uh, variables are listed as x, y, and z. I've got three of them, and I also have three equations. So here's my co corresponding coefficient matrix, which is just the coefficients of each of the um, variables. And then here, this is going to be playing the role of our matrix B here. So this is our matrix B, this is our matrix X, and here is our matrix A. And I'm saying matrix, so you could think of that as column vector or column matrix either way. So that means if we want to solve for the first entry here, Kramer's rule says we take the determinant of A in the denominator, and in the numerator, this would be this would be our matrix A1, where what have we done? We've replaced the uh, first um, column vector of A with the vector B. Okay? And uh, this would be our A2 here, uh, and we've replaced, for to solve for Y, we've replaced this uh, uh, determinant in the numerator with a uh, with the second column vector. We replace that with uh, vector B, and same thing for C, or for uh, Z. Okay, folks. So now let's look at an example of this. So number five asks us to solve this uh, system right here. It's a system of two equations, two unknowns, and we're asked to do it using Kramer's rule. So let's go ahead and first represent the uh, system of equations as a matrix equation. So the coefficient matrix will be 3, 2 for the first column, 2, 5 for the second column, times our uh, unknown column vector. In this case, we'll use x, y. And that's to equal the uh, constant vector on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and put the entries of the constant vector in red so we can see the permutation that we do. Okay, so what does Kramer's rule say? Well, it says provided the determinant of matrix A is in zero, then we can go ahead and give a representation of the solutions to this system coordinate-wise, where the first coordinate has a solution of the determinant of A1 all over the determinant of A. Let's be careful here. Let's label this as matrix A. This is the uh, column vector X, and this is the column vector B. So what does this notation mean? Well, the determinant of A is simply the determinant of 3, 2, 2, 5. And the determinant of A1 is the determinant of the same coefficient matrix A, except we're going to replace, in this case, the first column with the column vector B. So that gives us 5, 1, 3, 2. If we compute this, let's see here, the determinant of the denominator would be 3 times 5 minus 2 times 2. So that gives us a, de a determinant of 11 for that denominator. We'll use that again. In the numerator, uh, we've got a, oops, it looks like I mistranscribed this. This should be the column vector 2, 5. And I simply replaced the first column vector with 5, 1. So this gives us 5 uh, times 5 minus 2 times 1, which is 25 minus 2, or 23. So then for uh, the second unknown variable, y, Kramer's rule says we can represent this as the determinant of a2 all over the determinant of a, which is the determinant. And in this case, we take our coefficient matrix, again, leaving all columns the same, except for, in this case, we're going to replace the second column with 5, 1. The determinant in the denominator still computes to be 11. And in the numerator, we get uh, 3 minus 10, or we get negative 7. So that means we've got a solution vector of x, y. By Kramer's rule, we found the solution to this system to be 23 elevenths and minus 7 elevenths. So folks, we'll pick this up. We'll discuss it some more in the next video. But that is the essence of Kramer's rule.